Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff another Madden cheese as always. Got another gameplay video for you guys today. Although today it's going to be a defensive tip video. I haven't done like a tip video in a while, uh, especially defense, because I know a lot of people are struggling with that, uh, you know, as far as defense comes. So I definitely wanted to put out one of these videos for you guys. If you like these type of videos and you want me to focus on them more, whether that's tips, tricks, videos, cheats, videos, or gameplay videos in general, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section, and I will continue to focus on them. Other than that, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at MMOXP. If you're trying to get your mud team up like mine, do yourself a favor, check out the link in the description below and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. And they already have the cheapest coins on the market, so check them out. Now, as far as the gameplay goes, I start out on the offensive side. But I'm not going to be on the offensive side very long. I typically start off just about every single gameplay I do uh, with the fullback inside from the gun split close. It's just a really easy play to run. I mean, it's like a guaranteed five-yard run pretty much every time. But when I come to the line, I can see my opponents in what looks like a cover three. So I switch to the halfback uh, close wheel because I have a really good cover three one-play touchdown out of it. Um, which, you know, typically works a lot. But I forget one very important variation. And that's where I am on the sideline. And cover three especially can change a lot based off of where you are so since i'm on the left hash mark and i really didn't account for it i did a pre-snap read to the b route and that was a huge mistake as the a route was wide open i'm open i'm open over here So we throw an interception. We're going to go right to the defensive side. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do when I get to the defensive side is I'm going to sub my players to maximize the effectiveness of my defense. That's typically, like in this situation, I put my defensive end at defensive tackle. I put an outside linebacker at the defensive end spot. And then I have, uh, you know, safeties at all the linebacker spots just to maximize uh, the speed of this defense. The next thing I'm always going to do is I'm going to make sure that I replace my audible plays. As you can see right here, I run one cover two man because that's one of the better defenses in the game. A cover four drop because that's one of the better defenses of the game. And then cover three sky drop which is going to be my pass defense uh, for the majority of the uh, football game then I'm going to pick my base defense now your base defense is something that should be good against the run and the pass equally effective against both in this scenario it's the cover for drop which is a new with the defense I'm going to be putting out pretty soon uh, it's one of the base defenses that I've been using quite a bit this particular play I'm going to basically before any play starts I want to close as much gaps and space as possible I'm going to bring uh, you know my cornerbacks down to the receivers I'm going to bring uh, the defensive line I'm going to pinch that I basically just pinch the entire defense and then I try to spread out my linebackers a little bit so I don't get caught on outside runs. Now this is just a base defense setup. There's no tendencies yet. My opponent hasn't run any any place so I have no idea what type of offense he likes to run so I'm going to run a very uh, basic setup for him and then as the game goes along and I figure out my opponent's tendencies then I'm going to customize my defense uh, to match what he's doing. So that's typically what you want to do. You want to try to figure out your defense as quickly as possible. You want to basically do small things like I'm going to try to categorize him as what type of player he is. Is he a runner? Is he a passer? Is he a balanced player on that first play he passed the second play he ran so so far he's a balanced player but you got to keep almost keep a tally in your head until you figure out what type of player you're playing against on the next play since he ran I mean I'm still kind of setting up a uh, vanilla look uh, since he's running a lot of crossers though I give myself a three rack here as you can see it takes away that crosser for the most part and we get a a coverage sack so you can see customizing my defense is already working out on third and 18 though um, you know the goal of this game is to get into predictable situations and third and 18 is a pretty predictable situation that's going to be a pass now the only issue is I overthink it if it's not broke don't fix it I'm not gonna you know I picked the cover three lock here but I really should have stuck with the defense that I was using because he was having nothing but problems with it and then on the next play I mean this is the exact same play he's been running pretty much this entire game uh, that I've been clamping up and he gets a very long pass play to uh, convert the first down so so, like I said, you know, if you have something that's working, don't overthink it. Just keep using it until they make you, until they force you out of it. So, on the next play, we go right back to that because, like I said, it was working, so why would I change it? Uh, you know, you have to do something major against my base defense to get me out of it. A run like that, a seven-yard run, that's not enough to get me out of it. On the next play, I mean, I try to customize it a little bit based off of his tendencies. He's been running this formation a lot where he motions the receiver across, and I was kind of waiting for him to do that. Uh, but then he switches over to a different formation, and I didn't have enough time to adjust, and he just beats me right up the middle. 
But that brings me to my next point, which is situational tendencies. Situations like red zone offense, third down, fourth down, stuff like that. You have to pay extra special attention to what they do in critical situations like that because that really tells what type of player they are. On the next play, he's trying to beat that cover four one more time. Like I said, this defense, it's been clamping him up. And we get an interception. We're going to run that play until he does something significant to make us change out of that play, whether it's scoring a touchdown or, you know, hitting a one-play touchdown against us, something like that. So we're pretty much going to rock that until he figures out that puzzle on the offensive side we're just getting pushed back uh we get sacked for a big loss but you know what i mean i can beat cover three so i'm gonna go right back to that middle high low play um there's a couple of different ways that you can set this up i'm gonna set this up a slightly different way than uh, even i put out in the video than when i put it out originally but i'm gonna motion this guy in here and this wire out here probably has no business getting outside of a cover three like that break yourself fool <laughs> he could go so we're up 7 nothing on the defensive side like i said we're just going to keep uh, working the exact same keys uh to victory here nope like i said this is a very good run uh, run defense the cover four um which i'm not even getting the full setup in i'm just kind of doing a half a setup right now because it's not to the point he's a pretty balanced player so it's not to the point where i want to completely do the run defense setup to the point where i'm committing to what he's doing i'm not fully customizing it yet because he really could do anything so this is still kind of a vanilla setup my next tip would be always watch for coverage beaters even if they fail because just the fact that he failed this time doesn't mean it's not going to work out next nope. time. So you always have to keep an eye out for that. You always want to defend against those one-play touchdowns. On the next play, third and eight, he goes for it on the ground, which isn't typical of third and long. So that's a real strong indicator that he's a run-first player. So I have to remember that as well. On the next play, he beats me. Uh, it's the first time he beat that cover four with one of these crossing routes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to try to give him a new puzzle to solve uh, because you repeat success and you change failure. So I'm going to go with the cover three cloud. Then I'm going to mirror the setup because I want to try to set a trap. I want him to think he's still going after that cover four, and then maybe I can bait him into throwing a bad pass and throwing an interception. This is definitely one of my most turnover-heavy defenses in the game. I just put out a gameplay where I had seven interceptions with it. Nope. It's still a good run defense, as you can see. Second and seven, like I said, this guy's he's definitely a run-first player, so I can't really look at it like this is a second and long. I pretty much have to set this up um, like it's you know could be anything. So I set up a hard flat underneath. He goes across, and I probably should have had another interception. I just couldn't body that receiver. Nope. I don't know if it's DK Metcalf is just such a boss out there. Uh, so, once again, remembering situational tendencies, my opponent was a run heavy player on the last third and long. I expect him to be here, but I can't sell out. I'm not going to run commit. I'm not going to change to a heavier defensive package or something like that. So, I'm just going to do my best with what I got. And he luckily falls forward for the first down, but I still like the play call. So, he's got a first down. On the next play, uh, look for little tells. Tells like, uh, you know, receiver movement, uh, running back movement, quarterback movement, like this. He's, you know, he's making uh, adjustments. This lets me know that it's a pass play anytime a guy is doing a lot of adjustments like that it's a pretty good tell and then you can see right here we get the sack on the next plays. everything's pretty much clamped up on the back end on the next play once again i can't set up too much of a pass tendency because he has shown uh that he runs the ball no matter what the down and distance is and then you can see on second and 15 he does that again but we get a nice stop no nope. then third and 11 i'm so confident it's a pass i don't even pinch my defensive line and sure enough he takes advantage of that he does not get the first down though that's why you don't run on a down and distance like that uh but at the end of the day he takes the field goal because i guess he was pretty confident since he was getting ball after half so second half he's really showing his true colors now as he's just running the ball pretty much every down uh, but that doesn't mean I could commit to that I still have to play vanilla because he doesn't have a lot of points I'm not gonna you know go one way or the other on the next play he motions out the uh, receiver and then he's making movements with the quarterback when the receivers motioned out the play is locked in you can't switch it you can't change a lot of things uh, without the receiver motioning back so that's an extra tell that lets me know that he basically he's locked into the play that he chose which is a pass play because the only adjustments he could have did at that point were hot routes so you know that's uh, another you know deep level tell that most people won't get uh, on the next play, um, I mean, you got to hide your own tells. I'm going to switch formations for the first time. I'm going to come out in a run-heavy formation, and I start pressing, and I go the full uh, run commit, which is why I said earlier you don't do this. You're going to see why right now. He sees all that. He makes his adjustment. He turns this into a coverage beater, uh, and sure enough, he's going to uh, beat me right over the top. So I fully committed to the uh, to the run defense, uh, which is a huge mistake. You always have to defend the end zone first. Don't sell out for a situation. Uh, remember the bigger picture, which is you're trying to keep your opponent off the board, and me committing the way that I did, even though I didn't run commit, was a devastating uh, ending to that drive as we give up a touchdown. So he's still in that cover three. I'm going to try a different cover three play. I'm going to go with the mesh spot. Uh, but once again, I mean, we're, we're going to have to remember this time that we're on the uh, the hash mark. We're, on the, we, we're, we're all the way to the right. So the read's going 
going to be different. The receiver that's going to get open in this situation is typically not going to be the streak. This is something that uh, a lot, not a lot of people know, but where you are on the field really determines who gets open. So now that I uh, remember that and I forgot it in the first time, I'm going to pre-snap read to the Y route, and sure enough, he's wide open outside for a very big play. Now, on the next play, I try to do the exact same thing. I don't know what happened here, but I try to do the exact same setup. I'm pretty confident that I, I do it the exact same way that I always do. Uh, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out. As this time, the uh, the cornerback really breaks the rule. I Once again, I pre-snap read to the A route. Sure enough, this time it should have been the B route. So what the fuck? definitely not making the best pre-snap reads. Both the interceptions were based off of that play. So I don't know if there was a patch recently that changed how that play reacts. I don't know. Something I got to look into. So next defensive play, next tip. Know what your defense is best at. I know that the cover three clouds my best pass defense the cover four drops my best run defense uh, and since this game's close I'm going to bet on his tendencies which is he's a run first player he's only up three probably wants to salt that away as much as possible nope. or try to keep the ball on the ground where he's comfortable second play like I said his tendency is a run first player I've known that based off of his third down uh, you know what he's done on third down so we're going to customize that tendency on this next play we're going to go ahead we're going to hit him with a hard flat which is kind of the next level setup for this to make this an even better run defense uh, and sure enough though on the next play he most out the receiver. The second he does that, you can see that icon pop up. I'm switching this over to Cloud Flats because I'm expecting a pass, and then he's taking too long with his setup. I guess he was trying to set up another one-play touchdown. But even though the play ended in a penalty, that was still a passing tendency, and now that it's second and 15, it really raises the chances of that. So we're going to come out in our pass defense, which is the cover through Cloud, one more time. We're going to give him our best pass defense. Looks like he's switching over, though. As you can see, I mean, he's making a lot of adjustments, a lot of audibles. These are all things that lend to another pass play. We do one more customization. We send a blitzer on the right side here, which is something we haven't typically done but something we've been messing with a little bit lately and it looks kind of glitchy as you can see this guy just gets through unblocked we could go. Woo. there was two guys that weren't blocking anybody he's just standing there menacingly I mean, he ran right around the fullback, and two guys didn't block anybody. I got to mess with that a little bit more, and I do going forward in this game. So on the next play, third and 24, he runs it. I think he just wanted to give himself a little bit more room to punt the ball away, but at the end of the day, he didn't give himself enough room. <laughs> As we get a huge punt block and a, we pick it up for the scoop and score, so we're back on top. I mean, we didn't do anything to earn that. We got bailed out a little bit. I think two plays on that drive, we kind of got bailed out, but I'll take it. So now that he's down, I'm going to send those blitzers one more time. Like I said, I was pretty impressed with how that first blitzer got in, so I'm going to do it again, try to light him up a little bit, give him a little bit of heat. Uh, sure enough, it looks like he's trying to set that one-play touchdown again as he's taking too much time, he gets another penalty. So second and 10, uh, he's going to do that motion one more time. Every time I see that motion, I mean, like I said, this point's pretty much a dead giveaway that he's going to be passing. So I went, go ahead and I try to flip the play because all these things are tells. I know at this point that that's exactly what he's trying to do. On the very next play, sure enough, he was trying to hit that one play touchdown one more time. Although this doesn't work out because I have some nasty safeties. So we get an interception. We get the ball back. Uh, we return to about midfield. Uh, we're late in the fourth quarter. So at this point, we don't want to do anything passing wise. We just want to try to milk as much clock as possible. We go right back to that fullback inside from the beginning. Like I said, that's one of the best plays in the game running wise. And then we're going to with my single back A scheme. This is another scheme that I just put out out of the Niners playbook. Anytime I see that single high safety, that's a mistake because I'm just going to thread this needle right here uh, in between those safeties and corners. Uh, and then, like I said, I don't really intend to throw the ball too much now, especially since I'm in the red zone. I mean, I just want to kick a field goal, kill as much clock as possible. You can see how good this run scheme is. The first game I uh, gameplay I put out from it, obviously it was, uh, you know, this is one of the best running play schemes in the game for me, especially since I use the Niners playbook. So we're just going to hit him with a couple of plays. Like I said, I'm not really too worried about getting first downs anymore because I know he's run committing. I just don't want to make a mistake with the ball on third and seven uh, we're just gonna you know basically hold this take the sack and take the point so he doesn't have any timeouts by the way that was the best thing about that particular drive is I made him use all of his timeouts which is probably the most important thing so knowing that he has no timeouts situationally I know he pretty much has to pass so on the first play I choose my best pass defense one that I have I, mean, I kick it up a notch I haven't even used this play yet out of the dollar three two six to cover three cloud show two one of my favorite pass defenses a little bit more sp speed on the field than the original defense which is more of a base defense and on the second pass attempt, gotcha, uh, we get an interception to basically seal the deal. Now, I thought he went down there. He just completely whiffed on the attempted tackle, and we're going the other way. Dick Night Train Lane gets up, and he's taken to the house. Dick Night Train Lane, by the way, is the best slot corner in the game. He's an absolute animal if you don't have him. So that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see more gameplay videos like this, do me a favor. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Much it out. If you need more help or just want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.